Hello and welcome to another amazing episode of the Bible and one year with the preacher's husband. Today we are going through 2 Chronicles chapter 10, 11, and 12. Now tomorrow we're going to jump back over to 1 Kings and do chapter 15 verses 1 through 24. Then we're going to flip back over here to 2 Chronicles and do chapters 13 through 16 as, as well. So keeping in mind that we are doing this chronologically. So, we're rehashing a little bit tonight. When we start out in chapter 10, it starts out where we were talking about yesterday with the divided kingdom. Kingdom about Jeroboam, who is now the king of Israel, and Rehoboam, who is the king in Judah. So, we rehash that in chapter 10. And in chapter 11, talks again about Rehoboam in Jerusalem. And one point to be made again here was that he had 180,000 fit young soldiers. So keep that number in mind. 180,000 fit young soldiers that he had put together. So since God had brought about the split of the kingdom as a punishment, and we talked about that yesterday, he informed Rehoboam through a prophet named Shemaiah, Shemaiah, yeah, that the king should give up any thought of invading and restoring the northern tribes. This was not the time for a civil war. The people of Judah and Benjamin needed to go home and settle in under their new conditions and their new leadership. And they had a new way of life as well. So instead of carrying out an invasion, Rehoboam assumed a defensive posture and he fortified cities throughout the territory of Judah and Benjamin. Now Solomon, he had created large fortifications all over his kingdom, but many of those were installations that now belonged to the northern kingdom of Israel. So Rehoboam needed to establish a smaller circle around Jerusalem. So cities that previously had not been important, such as Bethlehem, now became crucial defensive posts. Not only did Rehoboam see to it that they were physically reinforced, but also that each of these places had a leader and a supply of food, oil, and wine, and large shields and spears. So they had weapons, they had leadership, they had food, oil, uh, why everything they needed so he wasn't really a horrible leader at this point he wasn't making terribly unwise decisions like he started out he had learned from some of his mistakes it seems to, that it seems at this point that he's getting better but meanwhile Jeroboam in the north was faced with a serious problem of his own um the mindset of the people over whom he was supposed to rule made it almost impossible for him to be an effective king. He had broken away from Rehoboam and Jerusalem, but the temple was in Jerusalem, and the priests and the Levites were still loyal to the temple. You remember all those Levitical towns and all those Levitical cities that were peppered all through um, Israel as a whole when it was all one piece? Well, now a bunch of those Levitical cities still existed, and those Levites still wanted to worship the temple. They still wanted to make those sacrifices in Jerusalem. Well, that wasn't going to happen under Jeroboam's direction because the new kingdom of the north was rooted in idolatry right from the beginning. Jeroboam replaced the worship of God with the worship of goat demons and two of these big, huge golden calves. One in the northern section of the kingdom at Dan, and the other was in the south, close to the border with Judah and Bethel. He also installed a new priesthood of those who were willing to serve these idols rather than the Lord. So there was some upheaval there in his area in Israel. During the first three years, both of these guys looked inward to try to strengthen themselves. So during this time, <laughs> you get to... You got to think about Solomon, how um, I'm referring to verses 21 and mainly just 21 right here about Rehoboam and his 18 wives and, of course, 60 concubines. He was the father of 28 sons and 60 daughters. And I got to thinking, well, Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. He had a thousand women and he still had absolutely zero luck when it came to women. He was... Not good. He still didn't figure it all out when it came to the women's side of things. Rehoboam's really not any better. Um, many of his wives came from 
his wider circle of blood relatives, such as his cousins and half-cousins, even a great aunt, unless there was something wrong in the genealogies or something, was one that he married as well. So he did have a favorite, but that favorite, Maka, she ended up becoming very influential and in leading the people into idolatry later. So Rehoboam made sure, on a good note, that all of his sons that he had had a meaningful purpose. He put them in charge of many of the newly found, forty, founded and fortified cities, and he provided them with numerous wives and, of course, the food and the oil and the wine and the weapons that they needed to live. So he wasn't a terrible leader, but there were some negatives that went on when it came to him and the women, just like with Solomon, like father, like son in that, that aspect, I would say. Um... And then when we get to verse 12, this is Rehoboam had established his sovereignty and royal power, but he abandoned the law of the Lord. He and all Israel with him. That means all of Israel who was already worshiping um, golden calves and goat demons. Now, Rehoboam decided he's not going to follow the law of the Lord either. And because they were unfaithful to the Lord... In the fifth year of King Rehoboam, King Shishak of Egypt popped into the picture here. And he came through and basically um, came through and pilfered all of these towns. Um, King Shishak went to war with Jerusalem. And he came with 1,200 chariots and 60,000 ca cavalrymen. Now, 60,000 cavalrymen, that's about, that's only a third of the amount of men that were able-bodied that Rehoboam had. But he didn't have the chariots. He didn't have all of the horses that these guys had. And also the Libyans, the Sukim, and the Kushites all helped out. Um those um some of those were ethiopians that helped that helped out shishak now there was this prophet shemaiah who explained to king rehoboam that his sin was the cause of this invasion and when this happened he realized what he had done wrong and he humbled himself and he repented well that's the kind of the thing about this Shishak's army arrived in Jerusalem, and they just helped themselves to everything that was there. A lot of scholars say that even though Rehoboam could have defended himself, he just, essentially, they just laid down their arms, opened the doors, and the Egyptians came through and just helped themselves to everything that was there. There wasn't a whole lot of fighting according to the history books. It was more of a... They came in, took whatever they want, and then they left. They took all of the gold that they had, the gold shields and everything that they had. So after they left, Rehoboam replaced those golden shields with what he had to work with, which was bronze, which was not a very expensive, it was not a very valuable metal. But on the screen here, you have some of the details of Shishak and some of the, the uh, details of what happened during his his excursion into Jerusalem. Now, when Rehoboam had humbled himself, the Lord's anger turned away from him, and he did not destroy him completely. See, the Egyptian army could have really just destroyed Jerusalem and wiped them all out. Instead, they just came in and took what was valuable and left. Besides that, the conditions were pretty good in Judah. Now, we get to chapter 12, around verse 13 and 14, and this is the death notice of um, Rehoboam essentially and it's negative Rehoboam was overall considered to be an evil king because of the fact that he did not follow the law of the Lord but in the end he did repent he did humble himself so I guess that's a positive in his corner although his reign was not great and wonderful so I hope this has touched you in some way if it has click the like button and subscribe button and of course click the little jingle bell so you can get notified the next time we upload a video which will be tomorrow for another episode of the bible in one year with the preacher's husband we'll see you then